I've known my dad since, well, since he started knowing things, and uh, I guess he's where I get a lot of my hyperactivity and just constant going and doing stuff from. And he and I have tackled a lot of projects together, and I wanted to get his point of view on the warehouse. We had all our stuff crammed into that re our retail space, which is now on Carson Street. So like, when customers came in, they could only come in about this far. And I had found this warehouse that had been abandoned for years, and I looked at it like four times in a row, like once a year for like seriously like four years, and just couldn't make it work. Couldn't. <laughs> But the, the real estate agent found it was like, man, this place is abandoned, just put in an offer. And uh, it was in pretty bad shape, so I did, and with the idea like that we would rehab it, we got it at a fair price. So then I had to figure out how to, you know, how to rehab it. And my dad had recently retired, and he's hyper and probably driving my, my stepmom nuts. So I asked him to come up and help me rehab this warehouse. Well. He has his own way of doing things, and uh, the warehouse is, is no different. We came in and just gutted it. I mean, ripped down lights and crap and pressure washed the floor and repainted the whole thing. The only thing I really needed to do was have a lot of beer there, so I just kept stocks of beer and he went crazy for months. And uh, like I said, we've tackled a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of projects in the past, but this one was Pretty intense. So I wanted to get his take on it. So I had we just brought on the two the two new interns, uh, Dylan and Cody, and I had told my dad that he was going to do an interview. And he, I'm not doing a damn interview. Blah blah blah. Where's the camera? Just walked down and sat down. <laughs> they just just followed him around. So this is the warehouse, the the creation of the warehouse, or the the rehab of the warehouse, according to Max. So. This, this is Max. Hi there, my name is, I'm Dan Roo's father, Max Roo. Uh, not real good at getting interviewed, but we're gonna give it a try. <laughs> and I got two intelligent cameramen here working on me. They're gonna ask all kinds of questions, and I'll keep you informed of what all has been going on at Commonwealth Press. <laughs> here before the sign. <laughs> so, I made it here before that. Then, the history of the building was how uh, it used to be a machine shop. Well then Dan decided he could they rent this place and he's gonna put a printing shop in here. Okay, well it started out that he could get it the first of December and well dad how about you coming down and I'll hire guys to do most of the work and I, I'm coming here with the intention that, oh, I'm going to be so off. I'll stand around and tell them, well, okay, fellas, we want this done and we want that done. It didn't work. Somehow it didn't work out at all. I mean, we ended up, there used to be a machine shop where every machine station here had its own individual light, had their lines to it, had their own lighting system and everything. So the first thing we had to do was tear all them, was like half inch pipe all over the building, each one of them stationed, and then there was light above each one of them. So we had to go around and take all that pipe out, I don't know how many hundred feet of pipe we had, <laughs> piled it all up, and then we got in working on the lights, we're up there cutting old, the old uh, fluorescent lights out of each station, it must have been probably six or eight in each row down through here, and probably three or four rows. And it just kept everything busy. And anyway, then he's up there and cutting the one what we're taking electric out of him with the lights, and he's up there cutting it. And you know, he jumped back and yelled at me and chalked me. I said, oh, you dumbass, that damn, there's no power in it. We've got it off everywhere else. So I go up with a pair of paint, side snips, cut the wire out, and it exploded. <laughs> Burnt the wire snips down and big me and him and everything else. And, well, that was. When the last time I called him a dumb shit, but <laughs> of course we started in December. There was no 
no running water, no running water. And one one furnace we got working back there. And now I'm we're trying to paint, and do all this work in here, and nothing. I mean, no heat, no. You paint all day, and then you have to put everything together, take it up to the old shop, the store up there, go to the basement, more shop, your paint brushes, and that stuff right up there. There's no hair water here other than freezing water. Lots of beer. <laughs> that was it. Lots of beer. When you come to where these white beams come down, there was grease grease from the machine shop all over them on that beam. Well, of course Danny comes down here once a day to check on me. And I'm in there you know, painted up that one keeper on the end there, holding the beam up. And he walked in the door and said, Boy, that looks like shit. And I said, what? Well, he said, that's white and the rest of it's all been all greasy. Now you got, we got to paint the whole beam. So then we painted these beams all the way across. I mean, not we. I stood on the ladder up there and my whole paint. <laughs> he made you do all the work. And you think he would tell me, just let it go, I'm going to paint the floor. No, I'm just hanging up there on the ladder. Every time I drip down, I run down, grab a rag, wipe the floor up, keep that off. Okay, back up the ladder, drip again, back down. I got the brainstorm, though, well, maybe if I wet the floor and I drop paint down, you know, it won't, that way it won't stick. So I flood the floor with water. And I go up there and I drip down. Not only did I, that paint just gets in the water and spreads all over the floor. Now I got a real mess. <laughs> well, that took an air so to get that clean. But anyway, that's how we got, we got it all painted out, finally, hanging on a ladder. I don't know what will happen then. We just we had quite a few fights over it. <laughs> <laughs> and any time you'd need something, you'd call Dan. I can't be bothering with you. He said, I got a damn business to run up here. What the hell are you leaving me alone? That's all I heard then. <laughs> anyway, we got through it. I don't know how. Well, we didn't kill each other, but we did our share of arguing and carrying on. I think it gets worse with age, though. Old Buddy Richie helped me clean the bathroom, though. I mean, it was a pig pen. Everything here was nothing like this. I mean, now we've got boxes of them, shirts sitting around. I worked for I don't know how long coming in here cleaning up all the time. Every time I'd be down every couple weeks, I'd you know, we put in five or six hours just cleaning up after these pigs. They don't clean up. Well, we got them clean, now they don't need them. <laughs> but very little will help out of him. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you look around there, that's a hell of a lot of paint to pull it around this and them beams up there. Plus that whole floor, plus. Yeah. Cleaning all the windows, cleaning this, cleaning that. What I'm really proud of though is I put. I'm sitting here one time, he told me, put Bill, put that, painted that wall back there with that, that, that picture. He said, there's a, behind that, there's a window behind that. And he said, you know, if I cut them eyeballs out, that would go out pretty nice. So, so one day I'm sitting here drinking beer. And I said, well, this is going on, I don't know, sorry, buddy, a couple of years ago. I'm sitting here looking at him and I'm drinking another beer and drinking another the hell with it. And I got up and grabbed the saw and <laughs> got them two eyeballs out, you know. So, did you ever see them light up at night? No. Huh? I haven't been in here at night, huh? Oh, oh they light up at night. I think he has pictures of them below. I think they are still there. Looks like that it has to be a hole there. Can you turn the light on behind it? Like when the lights are out, those lights will glow. Yeah, we have a red light that you put behind it. I was bragging about how I cut that out now. Look, I'm crazy. You didn't cut out. Well, you cut it out, and then I had to cover it up because yeah. you cut it out. <laughs> so Came fun. back all covered in sod. I was like, oh, I'm cutting the holes out for you. <laughs> See, that's, when that's I tell you, he's always a smart ass. See, there you go. Oh, then he had the big grand opening here, big ceremony. I mean, we must have had three, four hundred people. I mean, he has videos of it. It was real nice. But then he had to have me cut the ribbon. Of course, I'm not one to stand up in front of nobody. And oh well. No. Anyway, I grabbed it. Said, "Okay, big deal. I'm going to cut." He had a big pair of scissors, about two feet long. And I'm going to cut the ribbon in place. I cut the ribbon, and of course, I got my finger in there, and about smashed it. And everybody was cheering, "Hey, Max! Hey!" The whole crew yelling, "Max!" I don't know. Pretty exciting.
for them. I don't get, uh, of course I just, yeah, whatever, no big deal. <laughs> Nothing's a big deal for me. But anyway, it's turned out real good. He made a good big business out of it. Working real good. I don't get down very often now because he doesn't need any more help. First couple of years he was in here, I was down here about two or three days a week. I'd come down, stay, it would snow back home, I'd run home, get the snow shovel, and then I'd be back down here again. Well, we, it's worked out pretty good, all things considered. When you think about that little shop he was in up there, and I mean, I wasn't even allowed in there because you couldn't stand in it anywhere you wasn't in the road. <laughs> There's always push him, get out of there, move, okay, get out of there. This here was the murder room. They called it a murder room because there was pipes hanging everywhere. You wouldn't have brought, if you ever wanted to kill somebody, this is where you'd have brought them. You bring them in here, you could have killed them, threw them under something. I mean, it was so trashy that you, nobody was ever caught. So one day I decided I'm going to clean up the murder room. I came down here and I started tearing stuff apart, picking up junk, threw it all in this corner. I had it touching the ceiling here. Just garbage and tins and paper and pipes and that was completely full. Then we got a build door. That's the door. That was homemade, manufactured by me on the floor, hung here, put it on. Because the old door, all it was, is a matter of a piece of plywood setting here and a couple of garage doors. The old bar, old door, set in front. So anyway, there's the door here. I walked over here one day, this old door here, and I just pulled off and dumped it like that. The whole door went falling out. Of course, Mark McGrath, Mark, yeah. Mark McGrath, he used to park his truck right there. Whenever that door come flopping down, he's going right straight for the fender of his truck, and I'm panning and running out through it. But it hit and bounced off. Thankfully, it didn't do a whole lot of damage. But that was... That was just one episode, Bill the door. The girls, of course, they perked up. What? What room? What room? She said, the more door room. <laughs> she said, that he's working on it. We're putting a room in down there with more doors in. That's a more door room. Oh, okay. Then. She didn't want me calling it the murder room in front of the girl. And I thought that was pretty clever of her to come up with that right away. Yep, oh no, that's a more door room. All right, I quit. You quit filming?